How are we doing? It's Martin from Guidance for Life. In this quick video, I'm going to bring you along on our, um, probably actually one of our last tuber harvests we'll have this winter. Um, we're just digging up some Jerusalem artichokes, some uh, uh, Madeira vine, and some yacons as well. Tubers are typically harvested from uh, the beginning of December until right around now, which is the end of April. I'd say in the next week or two is going to be your last chance to actually get some of these tubers. We do have them for sale on our website and um, you can uh, just take a look below and we would appreciate your support very much. And don't forget members get 25% off every order and they get a free uh, 5 euro surprise gift with their order too. When digging up Jerusalem artichokes I really don't like using um, a fork for example. Um, or even worse, an actual uh, shovel, because you could actually cut through uh, the tubers and you never know where they are because you better actually just use the fork if you absolutely have to, just to loosen up um, one or two places and then just uh, be able to grab the tubers uh, from there with your hands and just harvest them with your bare hands rather than using um, sharp implements like a fork. Look at what great habitat this material uh, makes for the insects especially because they actually, um, the stalks, they actually bore a hole in the side of the stalk and then they overwinter in the middle section uh, which you can see here. It's kind of like foam or kind of like insulation so it's ideal especially for a bird's nesting as well. Um, once you have enough Jerusalem artichokes growing in an area for a year or two you'll have plenty of uh, stalks there to insulate the ground as well over the winter. And that's the idea, you always need to keep some of your uh, brush um, at the end of the growing season, always leave it in the garden so that the insects have somewhere uh, to uh, seek shelter over the winter. Springtime is usually the best time to clear these kind of things, but we'll, we're going to make an insect pile um, out of that, uh, just like the one here. You can see it right there. We have insect piles um, in various different locations. Uh, there's another one way over there, maybe you can see it, and another one beyond that. We basically have an insect pile or a brush pile um, every 10 meters in the garden in any direction. It just saves a lot of time and you can just uh, throw any brush or any bits and pieces straight onto the pile from any place in the garden. Well, there is a video idea. I need to make a video about the brush piles or the insect piles, as we like to call them. Uh, formerly known as insect hotels, actually. Insect hotels are a little bit posh uh, because, um, well, you know, they're nice, but brush piles are so much easier to maintain. You simply keep um, dumping your material on top, generally speaking, carbonous material. One of many reasons to grow Jerusalem artichokes. Sometimes it's a bit hard to um, actually get your fingers into the ground to rip up the tubers. That's why sometimes it's worth using a fork, but it's always a bit risky because you could easily poke the tubers. The soil life is absolutely teeming here. Seems that even, even though the soil life does not actually um, consume these tubers. Um, it still seems to congregate all around them. Maybe it's the exodus from the roots of the tubers or from the roots of the plants when they're during when they're in the growing season. Hello. Daddy, I want to plant the carrot seeds. Though. Oh, a good idea. We're going to plant some carrot seeds today. What's, what's the variety? I think um, Autumn King 2 we're going with. A nice um, solid variety. Um, yeah, let's get that done in a minute. I'm just going to dig up a few more tubers. We 
we love the beetles in our garden because um, they actually eat the slug eggs. So I found out recently. <laughs> we'll put you over here. So we filled this crate and we've dug up maybe about two square meters in this area here. We actually dug a full crate just here in this spot too. I'd say it's probably about 40 kilos of tubers. That's 20 and another 20 just off this little area here. And it took about two years for them to grow. But don't worry, you will get a considerable yield after the first year. I can guarantee you that, especially if you're adding plenty of compost. And if they're planted in full sun, of course. So in early spring when the plants start growing, you have a tuber here and you have a growth like that. You have a stalk and that one broke off and it's no harm at all because you can plant this. You can see it already has a little root here. It'll develop into a whole new plant and this one here will just um, grow from different spots in the tuber. So it's, it's not a problem as I said if you uh, happen to break the stalk off or uh, yeah so you end up with two plants all the better. You know the way we've always said that the Jerusalem artichoke uh, stalks in the winter time are really good um, habitat or for, just for even for the insects to overwinter in your garden, especially when you pile them up. Even uh, the middle of the stalk is actually a bit like insulation. It's kind of like foam and it's hollow, of course. So that's where the insects will actually overwinter. Tomorrow we have someone picking up 100 kilos of Jerusalem artichokes and they're doing a bird preservation project. Imagine that in Donegal and in Mayo. So they're going to be planting half an acre of uh, Jerusalem artichokes and uh, yeah, so the first batch is ready anyway. Take a look at that. Nice mix of uh, all of our the four best varieties we have. Um, red fuzao, um, white truffles, um, the Chinese variety and uh, the regular fuzao as well, the white one. And there is a few more here. Two more crates. You can imagine what size a plant this tuber here will make. Lots of little ones too though. But um, every one of them will actually grow into a substantial plant in the first year. Okay, so we're in the greenhouse now and we're going to dig up uh, the last Madeira vine. It's just a clump of tubers that actually grows underground and it makes, uh, it climbs. So it's best to give it a trellis. And in the summertime you have all these uh, abundant leaves uh, that are just like spinach but much thicker and um, quite tasty. Where is it? Ah, it's over here. Ooh, that's dusty. There's the plant. You can see it is very dry in here. Not sure if I haven't harvested any of them. I may have harvested one or two. You can see how there's like a, a cluster of tubers underneath. So we will go at that now. Kind of need to excavate around it a little bit before you pull up the whole cluster. It's definitely a big one. Wow. Oh, geez, that's dusty. Until it, when the dust settles, we will see it. Look at that for a ball of tubers. And there's far more tubers here. Yeah, I definitely had to harvest these because there wasn't going to be enough space here in this um, small area that these plants have for all of these to grow. We basically planted five that size in the very beginning. That was about two years ago when we built this greenhouse. And each of them turned into a big seed cluster like, or sorry, a tuber cluster like that size. And then we simply replanted ones that are that size or maybe even a little bigger like that size of ones, probably pretty large ones. And that turned into a giant football size uh, cluster of tubers. Isn't that amazing? They are edible, these ones. Um, I didn't believe roasted, they're best. They're a little bit mucinogenic, so they're a bit slimy. 
uh, same as the leaves, but um, we haven't eaten the tubers yet, but the uh, leaves are really delicious and we love eating them uh, raw actually, just like a spinach in the summertime. And look what I found here, another snail house. And add that to the collection. So there you have it, that's one plant worth. Probably roughly about five or six kilos, I imagine. Um, pretty nice, that's a nice yield. Took up very little space. I'd say maybe 30 centimeters in a double row. And it only grew about a meter and a half tall, about there. If I had um, extra height in the greenhouse and a bit more trellising, we probably would have got a better yield even. We're happy with the yield and especially the leaves during the summer. Can anybody guess what those are? It's Yakon. So we're going to dig up the last few uh, plants and we're going to cut up the crowns and uh, divide them up into uh, little pieces with the growing tips. And we will also start those in the next few days as well, just to um, get some new yakon plants in the new season. Um, we're going to use the tubers, which is the edible part of the plant, uh, to make syrup. So my wife Bianca actually made some uh, lovely syrup the other day. It's really sweet, even though there's no sugar in it. And that's part because it's inulin. So it's really good for as a sweetener for diabetics. Well, I'm not diabetic, but you know, we could all lay off the sugar a little bit. But yakon is a really good food to actually um, help to get off sugar, as a matter of fact, even eating the raw tubers as well, just like um, an apple or something like that. And if you're growing them in the garden, they're available more or less any time of the winter between um, or from uh, the beginning of December until the end of April. Before we take you guys for time lapse, I just want to say that these plants have been here for two years. So the growing tips we found actually uh, look a bit more unusual, a lot more established and um, the yield isn't really a huge amount better than the ones we grow outdoors so I would grow yakon only outdoors anymore it's not really worth growing in the greenhouse because you can grow other things in the greenhouse that need to be in the greenhouse like whatever tender crops with thin leaves like tomatoes cucumbers um, of course peppers because you need a lot of heat Stuff like that, or, or some more exotic stuff like the Apios, of course, the Madeira. The salt bush doesn't really need to be here, but look, it's doing really well. You can see it over there. And this is like after a winter, and it's been growing like crazy. And a goji plant we have, and lots of fig trees. Fig trees grow much better indoors. So, but anyway, back to the yakon. So we're going to harvest these now. Let's see what kind of yield we get from them. So it's always best to kind of excavate all around it. You're going to be seeing a lot of dust here because it is super dry in here now let me try and pull that up that is not a massive plant but nevertheless you see the growing tips have definitely grown so we're going to cut that up and we'll divide it and make a few plants out of it kind of need to get in underneath it even if this is outdoors except of course, you don't see as much dust. Usually not anyway, in Ireland it always rains, but we have had our droughts. You can see how one plant can actually look like that. It can break into a few uh, parts of the crown, a few divisions. So and you can divide those further. And this is the edible part here. These are red yakons. So you'd cut that off here, or you can keep it on for some of them and then actually let it take all the energy from the tuber into the growing tip and make a new plant. So I imagine this will grow very big. We will plant a few of these like that just to see how big you can get or how big of a yield you can get after the first um, growing season with a bit of extra oomph attached to it. let's dig up this bad boy look at the size of that for a plant this is a true two-year plant I think it's just it was very dry in here and that's why probably the rest of the plants didn't really grow very well in the second year but 
one or two of them did. That's a huge plant, look at that. Wow, I've never seen that size of growing tips, look at that. Normally you'd only expect them to be something like these ones here. The smaller ones. Look at that. It's actually interesting for me to document, just for myself, to compare them. A good few growing tips here. We're going to divide them all up and grow as many plants as we can because we have extra room outside now. There's a few more available on the website, but not the white one, only the red one. We'll, uh, we'll still offer a few now, but uh, we're going to finish with these because we want to keep what we... We want to hold on to what we have so that we can regrow plenty of plants. And yeah, so as you can see, just from about a meter in this berm here, about a meter where the plants, you get one giant plant that's two years old though, these are, remember that, and a few smaller ones. But still though, not a bad yield. If we had uh, been watering more often, um, we definitely would have had a better yield. Um, we didn't water very regularly in here, only maybe every two weeks or so, but um, very thoroughly when we did. Next up uh, are some more yakon. Um, we're going to harvest these outside though. These weren't grown indoors. Um, we mainly had to get the yakons indoors out of the ground um, before they start growing because they're obviously starting up earlier than the rest of them. Um, the ones that are growing outdoors, I'll show them to you now, they're sort of uh, starting up too now. Then again, it depends on the variety, so take a look, still no signs of growth on this one. So we'll dig those up and we'll take a look at them. We've had very good yields in this garden here, alongside of our greenhouse. Don't forget, if you have any questions, just let us know in the comments below. If we don't mind answering them. So let's give this one a go. Sometimes I like to use the um, fork or, or maybe even a shovel but I don't like to break the tubers. You can see here, you need to, it's definitely less dusty out here, that's good. You can see how the ground is fairly moist though, below the surface, maybe a half an inch down, and um, even though it didn't rain for about a week. So look, you can see here, it's the first tuber, and there's another plant over here. So you definitely need to excavate the plant uh, from the outside first, from all around it, in order to even get in underneath it. Some of the tubers will undoubtedly break off in the process, like these ones. They are nice ones. Oh, Jesus! <sighs> Don't know what's going to break first, my back or to bottom of the crown. <laughs> Here you go. That's great. Wow. No wonder it was so hard to pull up because it actually weighs about probably seven or eight kilos. Oh, maybe not seven or eight, maybe five or six. But that's a really nice yield already, just from the one plant. There's probably a few more little tubers hidden under below. A few bits like that, we make a little uh, sacrifice we just um, throw a couple of bits back in the ground just to feed the soil life. In the name of biodiversity. Okay, let's dig up one more on this side here. All right, you should be in frame. is hard pulling these up. You need to 
excavated first all around it. Look at the size of these tubers. Wow. I still can't pull that up as it is. It's either stuck or it's heavy or both. And this is fairly loose soil. It is about a foot of compost, which we put in a year ago. Hang on. Let me try it from this angle. Oh, Jesus. It is hard work, but totally worth it. Wow. That's going to make a lot of syrup. And we've got a nice few growing tips on top. You can see how the growing tips are very different from the two-year-old plants. These ones here are much smaller. Definitely less vigorous. Well, not vigorous, less established, I would say. Yeah, so... We'll actually leave one of the plants in the ground just as an experiment and see how, grow, how big it'll actually grow. Now, yeah, I'm left with a crater. Just close that off and make it look like nothing ever happened. There you go. Oh, Bianca has just arrived here. Look at that. Check it out, Bianca. Look at all the tubers. Awesome. The amount of yak on would be making a nice bit of syrup now. Actually, all of that will probably make about maybe half a litre of syrup, is it? But that's loads. That's the last plant of the evening. That's probably the biggest yakon we've ever harvested. Um, so again, it's a red one. The red ones seem to yield very well. And you can see it's probably five or six kilos of tubers there, at least. Great. And the crater that's left, we'll just throw in a few of the little tubers for the worms so they can eat those. Check out how many worms we have here. Look, loads of worms we have. Especially underneath, uh, you can see them here, underneath any of these kind of uh, crowns of tubers plants. They seem to love it there, it probably attracts, uh, the exodus from the plant probably attracts um, soil life activity and therefore worms. So, all right, that's it for today. Thanks a million for watching the video and uh, we'll see you at the next one. And if you want to support the work that we do, uh, please consider becoming a member. Um, all about the benefits on our website. Just take a look at the link below. Thanks a million again and see you later. Bye bye.